Welcome back. In the last video, we had talked about a qualitative definition of simple harmonic motion. And we'd said that simple harmonic motion results from small displacements about a stable equilibrium. So in this video, we're going to show what that means mathematically. But before we begin, a brief prerequisite. Uh, we will be using Taylor series expansions in this video. So if you're not too familiar with what they are, you can pause it and look it up. Or if you'd like, I posted a video on Taylor series expansions. But with that out of the way, let's get started. Now, as I said before, was a mass and spring system that if we have a... Let's just take a look at potential energy as a function of displacement. And for the mass and spring system, I said that this parabolic potential energy curve gives rise to simple harmonic motion. Essentially, u of x is going to be proportional to the displacement squared. Now, this isn't going to be true, well, this isn't going to be as simple, I should say, as neat and tidy in all cases. Occasionally, you'll see, well, most of the time, you'll see really nasty or really complex potential energy curves that won't be represented with a simple parabola. It could be something like funky, like maybe, maybe something like that. But the important thing is, we can still get simple harmonic motion out of this by approximating this uh, complex potential energy curve as a parabola in the region that matters. And in order to do that, we're going to require two conditions. The first is that it must have a local minimum. And the second is that the displacements about this local minimum must be small. Small displacements. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and find an approximation of this potential energy curve about this minimum. And the way we're going to do that is with a Taylor series approximation. Now, just so we're all on the same page, the general formula for a Taylor series expansion, let's just say of a function f of x at around the point x is equal to a, or around the value of x is equal to a, the Taylor series expansion, that is f of x is equal to f evaluated at a plus x minus a divided by 1 factorial times the first, de oops, the first derivative of f with respect to x, and this term evaluated at x equal to a. Not the whole term, just this derivative, derivative term. Now, as I said in the Taylor series video, it's important to point out that when you take this function, this derivative function, and you evaluate at a point, it's no longer a function. Well, it provides a function of one variable, but it'll, when you evaluate at the point, it's now going to just be a constant value. So this whole thing, although it looks crazy, is just think of it as a constant. But for a better approximation, you're going to need higher order terms, so let's do our second order term, x minus a squared over 2 factorial times the second derivative of f with respect to x at x is equal to a. And we can even do a third order uh, term, oops, x minus a to the third power over 3 factorial times the third derivative of f with respect to x at x is equal to a. And there can be even higher and higher terms, fourth order term, fifth order term, etc. So now what we're going to do is we're going to apply this Taylor series expansion to just an arbitrary or general potential energy curve. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to use the same formula, but we're going to replace the f's with u's. And just to make it slightly uh, more convenient to write, Let's say that we're going to expand about the point x is equal to 0. Let's say that's where the minimum is. That's where, that's where we're interested. 
So we're expanding u of x about x is equal to zero. So we're gonna u of x is equal to u at zero plus x divided by one factorial times first derivative of u with respect to x, evaluate it, x is equal to zero, plus the x squared over two factorial times second derivative of u with respect to x at x is equal to zero, plus uh, we're gonna have x cubed over three factorial times third derivative of u with respect to x at x is equal to zero, and there can be even more terms. So this is just a general, uh, general expansion for an arbitrary potential energy curve. Now if you notice, this doesn't exactly look parabolic. It has a parabolic term, but it's got a lot of other terms as well. It's got an x term, an x cubed term, it could have an x to the fourth term. How are we gonna have this approximate our parabolic term, our parabolic uh, potential energy? Well, in order to do that, we're gonna have to apply some of our conditions. The first condition is, if you recall, potential energy is all relative to a reference frame. You may have heard, you might have heard in Intro to Physics that you can define potential energy up to any additive constant, which is what we have here, a nice additive constant. This is just a constant. So what we can do is we can just set for our frame we're working with, we can just say that this constant is equal to zero. I know it sounds a bit fishy, but for this relative system, it is indeed legal. Now let's apply the next condition. And that is actually the first requirement we had here, is that there had, we wanted a local minimum about x is equal to zero. Now, if you've taken calculus, the phrase local minimum or local maximum should raise a red flag because you should hopefully recognize that a minimum or maximum requires that the derivative must equal zero. So in this case, the first derivative of uh, potential energy with respect to x evaluated at x is equal to zero is equal to zero due to this fact that it has a local minimum. So what does this mean if we apply just these two conditions right here? That means that this term right here is equal to zero, and this right here is equal to zero, so our whole entire term becomes zero. So let's just rewrite our potential. So we have u of x is equal to zero plus zero plus, then the second order term, x squared, I'm just gonna evaluate the factorial, so x squared over two times the second derivative of u with respect to x at x is equal to zero, plus, and then there are the higher order terms. Yeah, the higher order, there can, and there could even be more. So, starting to look parabolic, except for these higher order terms. What can we do to get rid of those? What we can do is we can apply the next condition, that it has to have small displacements. Now, x is, our, is a measure of our displacement. So if x is small, then x squared is gonna be even smaller, and x cubed is gonna be even smaller than that, and x to the fourth is gonna be even way smaller, and they'll hopefully be so small that these terms will become negligible. Let me just illustrate what I mean by that. Let's just say that our displacement x is just equal to 0.1. Doesn't really matter the units for now, but just want to get the constant out. That means that x squared is equal to 0 0.01, which is still pretty small. It means that x cubed is equal to 0 0.001, which is even smaller and x to the fourth is equal to 0 0.0001, etc., etc. So if we say that the displacements are small, we can say that these higher order terms are so small, they're negligible. Which means, 
Which means that, what are we left with? We're just left with u of x, our expansion of our potential energy, is equal to 1 half x squared times this constant, second derivative of x, u with respect to x, at x is equal to 0. Just some constant. Now this is our parabolic potential energy that gave rise to simple harmonic motion with the mass and spring system. In fact, this is actually a general expression for simple harm that gives rise to all simple harmonic motion. The thing is, in different systems, in different cases, this second derivative term will take on different values. And just to really make sure, uh, drive the point home, in the mass and spring system, this second derivative term with respect to x at x is equal to zero has value, and we call that k, the stiffness of the spring, which means that we can apply this general potential energy curve, sorry, uh, expression for mass and spring system, and we get that u of x is equal to one half k x squared. And we'll find that in different systems, not necessarily mass and spring, but other examples, these will take on different physical values, but it'll still have the same parabolic potential energy, which will hopefully give rise to the same simple harmonic motion. Ooh, I'm uh, bordering on time here, so I may have to cut this video in two. Well, I'll hopefully see you in the next video.